Welcome back everyone and it's time to go BOOSTY! Did you see what Yuta and Rika just did in the manga? Hold up a second, we need to have a moment to take this in! Oh my god! They are absolutely insane when it comes to power and importance to the Jujutsu Kaisen story. Um, so as you can tell, I am really excited to talk about Yuta and Rika's power level. Not only because it looks flashy and my shonen brain things Ooh, colors and awesome choreography this is amazing this is goated blah 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 no yuta and rika's story has a significant importance to what they do with this insane power level so if you want to know the story side of things you need to watch this video being displayed to you right now but currently i am going to explain how strong is yuta in jujutsu kaisen as he is the closest person to match Sa Sato freaking Gojo in terms of strength. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Trust me when I tell you guys that Manscaped offer the best tools and liquid formulations for your body, your bum, and your balls. <laughs> They were kind enough to send me the performance package of 4.0 and let me tell you guys, okay? Life changing. We've got the Lawnmower 4.0 and you know what, in fact, let's get a little bit closer for this one because I know it's a sensitive topic, okay? I know you lads watching, okay? It's scary, right? We all know it. You're trying to carefully trim your one piece, but you never know what could happen. One little slip up and you've sent your sugar plums to the shadow realm. But thanks to this bad boy, that is no longer a problem. I am looking like Saitama's head down there now, ladies and gentlemen, okay? I know you might not think you need to know that, but just know this, it was pain free, smooth, and easy. And that is thanks to its advanced skin safe technology. On top of that, it's also waterproof, wireless with a 90 minute battery life, and it's even got a little light on it. You even get, and I'll be honest, I didn't even know things like this existed before Manscaped showed me, but my goodness, do you need them. I'm talking about the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Now this is all cool, right? I mean, your gooch is looking great, but have you seen the Weed Whacker. This nose and ear trimmer has the exact same skin safe technology to make sure that using it is a safe and sexy experience. Now I know what you're probably all thinking, wow, that's amazing, surely there can't be any more, right? Yeah. You even get the shed, travel bag, and on top of that, anti-chafing manscaped boxes for free on top of 20% off your order. And it doesn't even stop there. Free international shipping when you use the code ABD20 at checkout. Now for everyone to understand why Yuta Akatsu is always compared to Satoru Gojo in terms of power level, we first begin with Yuta's grade. He is classified as a special grade Jujutsu Sorcerer, becoming one of the four registered special grades after Yuki, Geto and Gojo in the entire Jujutsu world. It's pretty clear from this list that special grades are the pinnacle of sorcerers, usually being labelled as such for having an overwhelmingly powerful or strange curse technique with little to no drawbacks. As the Jujutsu Kaisen story progresses, we can recognise that Satoru Gojo's statement regarding rankings of sorcerers, it's actually coming true, you know, in regards regards to special grades and other ranks becoming meaningless. For example, Maki Zenin can be compared to Toji Fushigoro, who defeated Gojo before he mastered his curse technique, meaning by definition they are special grade. The same logic can be applied to Itadori and Megami, the next generation of sorcerers. They are way stronger than the higher ups recognize them to be in the official rankings of grades. Another reason why Satoru Gojo thinks the rating system is pointless in Jujutsu Kaisen is because the evolution and power of curses has rapidly increased in recent times. Now this is due to Sukuna's fingers resurfacing amongst other things such as you know modern society which produces more negative energy as the population increases. A lot of you can relate to that shit. Some of the shit I see on social media is kind of scary like you guys are posting like 
suicidal memes. You guys get the point, right? So, at the end of the day, this corrupt incompetence by the higher ups or politicians to deal with this rapid increase and the lack of empathy to solve this deeper issue is what causes Satoru Gojo to take things in his own hands by fostering the next generation to make a change for the better and sort out the problems. Again, I hate repeating myself, but I highly recommend you watch our other video regarding Yuta or this video about Jujutsu Kaisen's ending if you truly want to understand the culling games better. So make sure to hit the notification bell for our channel to make sure you don't miss out next time. <laughs> So even though curse spirits have become even stronger in recent times as I have explained, Yuta still demolishes special grades with ease. Look no further than the recent chapter 175, where he kills a special grade curse spirit. Yuta has extremely high curse energy that is even more than Satoru Gojo, the strongest sorcerer in the entire series. Gege Akatami, the creator of Jujutsu Kaisen, confirmed that Satoru Gojo is the sea of power in the series and no one will ever be above him which highlights how strong Yuta must be if he has more curse energy than him. He could potentially reach his peak. In fact Gojo himself admits this in the manga. There are multiple occurrences where we are told Yuta has the most curse energy in the entire series. Number 1 chapter 140. Itadori notices that Yuta's body and his katana were constantly surging with curse energy. Mentioning how Yuta had low power but had immense curse energy. Yuta then explains that he has more curse energy than Gojo but his sensei refined his power to where it's limitless. Number 2 In Volume 0, Suguru Geto mentions how Rika is the queen of curses and she's a spirit with endless curse energy. But since it was Yuta himself who turned Rika into a special grade curse spirit, we can say that it was actually Yuta's endless curse energy that Geto knows. Noticed. And number three, every character that interacts with Yuta notices his curse energy. In chapter 175, the two ancient sorcerers mention how his curse energy is bottomless, meaning that there is no end to it. In the recent chapters, they thought, oh, we finally get to see the end of his curse energy? But Yuta's like, what are you talking about? Rika's here now. And we all know what Rika can do. They didn't know he even had Rika at that point. And they were saying he has unlimited curse energy. <laughs> So as you can see, Yuta is the pinnacle in his own right when it comes to curse energy, which explains why he is so strong. But wait, we know Jujutsu Kaisen isn't a typical ordinary shonen. That's why we love it so much. This is because curse energy alone doesn't make you win a fight. It takes a lot more than that in this story. We must talk about Yuta's curse technique. Much like his teacher, Yuta overwhelms his opponents with it. But his actual technique is much more twisted and unusual. His curse technique has never been labeled or described in the same way as other curse techniques have been. Usually we get a definitive name and a description for every person's curse technique. But that's not the same for Yuta. Instead, we only have some glimpses into the effects of what can be assumed to be Yuta's technique and that is the summoning Rika, the curse spirit of his childhood lover. Now this is where some people get confused and I don't blame you. So I'm going to explain Yuta's technique as easily as I can. Kenjaku, an ancient sorcerer with immense knowledge from the golden age of sorcery, stated that Yuta is a able to curse someone close to him, like he did with Rika's soul, keeping her from passing away. This means that the queen of curses that everyone feared in Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 0 only exists because of Yuta's curse technique. Kenjaku even points this out when talking to Satoru Gojo in the Shibuya incident, that Yuta could not be the next Gojo because his abilities were only due to detaining a loved one's soul, like Rika. So we can say that Rika's presence Yuta's abilities by a crazy margin because when he freed her in volume 0, he got demoted to being a third grade sorcerer. However, in a very short period of time, he did something insane to get his special grade title yet again. Yuta came back in only 3 months after volume 0's events to receive his ranking back and he is second only to Satoru Gojo in unusual abilities as mentioned in chapter 173. Regardless, we know 
that Yuta has immense curse energy because he is a descendant of a vengeful spirit, Sugawara no Michizane, and is a distant relative of Gojo himself. This enables Yuta to control Riga easily and skillfully fight in close combat. But before we scale his boundless curse energy with his powerful feats in the manga, let's continue diving into his other ability. The second part of having Riga is Yuta's ability to copy curse techniques and this is unconditionally which means that he can literally copy other curse techniques without any type of rule or binding vow placed on him. What is unclear is if this is a perk received from Rika's soul specifically or something Yuta could do with any loved one's soul. We saw him copy Inomaki's curse speech ability whilst fighting Suguru Geto back in volume 0. However, he did not have good control over it, even saying to himself how skilled Unumaki must be to use this technique. This makes Yuta completely busted. So in theory, Yuta could copy anyone's technique until we're told otherwise. The only people he would have trouble doing so with would be Satoru Gojo and Megami. Gojo's limitless can only be used in his unique manner due to the six eyes. And Megami's 10 shadow technique has his Shikigami attached, each needing to be tamed in order to control. However, to make everyone understand how insanely broken Yuta is by achieving such a feat, the fact that the only other character we have seen do anything like copying techniques is the king of curses Sukuna himself, whilst having 15 fingers of his original power. He's also from the golden age of sorcery and was the king back then and all the sorcerers had to bind together to face off against him. In conclusion, it means there's some high level jujutsu at work for Yuta to copy techniques as well fam. Bruh, I'm just saying this guy's busted. But let me scale him even further to be even stronger. Wait a second, give me a moment. So since I established that Yuta's proficiency with curse energy is so great, let's talk about it even further. As this would confirm he is one of the strongest sorcerers to exist. So let's talk about his use of reverse curse technique. A reverse curse technique processes negative energy into positive energy by taking two sources of curse energy and multiplying them by one another. As a result, the energy that destroys becomes energy that creates and negative energy becomes positive. Despite sounding simple enough, producing reverse curse energy is extremely complex and difficult to perform for most Jujutsu users. Yuta could use the reverse curse technique in a very short span of time of training at the school. He could heal his friends back in volume 0 as a fresher, even impressing Satoru Gojo. Bear in mind that Yuta achieved this feat even after releasing Rika from her curse, which means since training overseas in the 3 months gap, Yuta has become even more proficient in using reverse curse energy. If we take a look when he stabbed Yuji Itadori and technically killed him, Yuta immediately healed him from death to preserve his life. Yuta using the reverse curse technique is such a big deal because he is one of the few only sorcerers who can do so. The others are Shoko, the Jujutsu school's doctor, Sukuna and obviously Satoru Gojo. But even if Gojo is included in this list, he can only use it to heal himself and his brain from the effects of the six eyes. On the other hand, Yuta can clearly heal people almost as efficiently as Shoko herself can. This shows how Yuta is one step ahead of Gojo in many aspects. Even when we scale Yuta's proficiency in this power with other sorcerers, such as Ureume in chapter 135, they don't even come close. Despite being called sorcerers on another level and they have decades of experience, in recent chapters such as 176, Yuta tanked an entire beam cannon to the face, which would realistically eradicate any other sorcerer from existence by the looks of it. However, Yuta Yuta instantly healed all his wounds. Another fact we need to keep in mind in chapter 143 is that Yuta interestingly stated that he can take positive curse energy and output it as it is. Now in Jujutsu Kaisen, you can never mix two similar sounding terms and such is the case with positive energy and positive reverse curse energy. When you look into the manga closely, you will realize that there's some distinction between both Sukuna's dialogue in his fight against Maharaga which fuels his doubt. The blade with Maharaga was enveloped with positive energy which is something similar to reverse curse energy. Sukuna even admits that if he was a cursed spirit
spirit he would have instantly lost even with 15 fingers. So this explains Yuta's potential and how insanely broken he is. Yuta stated that only a few people know that he can output positive curse energy in chapter 143. So what secrets lie behind this and how are both these energies even different? Well we have to wait for Gege Akatomi to decide to address the entire arsenal of power Yuta possesses with this positive energy which further showcases how he is evolving into a sorcerer that will match Satoru Gojo. I will now pass the video on to Harrison as he will scale Yuta even further and beyond as we still need to explain Rika and all the other curse techniques and powers and feats he has achieved. Harrison? Go ahead. As Adil mentioned earlier, it's now time to focus on Yuta's boundless cursed energy once again. Yuta's got all this cursed energy but fights using a katana. At first you would think Yuta is like a shikigami user and would let his familiar do a lot of the work. But unlike Megami and Ghetto, Yuta fights on the front lines, using Rika almost like a Jojo stand. He guides her to stop some attacks or even help him tackle difficult situations. For example, in chapter 174, Yuta asks Rika to bring down a bridge to help him kill the special grade cursed spirit, Kuroroshi's swarm of cockroaches. Initially, Yuta couldn't control Rika all that well, but it quickly evolved to Gojo showing him how to put his endless cursed energy into a katana in order to use it as a weapon against curses. This was Yuta's first experience with cursed energy enhancement, and it went on to become the core of his fighting style. At first he struggled to properly focus his cursed energy on the blade and only managed shallow cuts against strong cursed spirits. But after vigorous training and experience on missions, Yuta learned how to properly wield the sword with Rika's power. When facing Ghetto one on one, Yuta was able to match his speed which previously he couldn't keep up with when meeting Ghetto for the first time. That is how much the cursed energy boost helps Yuta's speed and reflexes. Yuta was able to hold his own against Ghetto's weapons combat with his katana. During the fight, Yuta began to grasp the use of cursed energy increasing his speed to outmaneuver Ghetto. He was even able to outmaneuver powerful curses spawned by Ghetto and killed them in one shot slashes. However, it was a standard katana and could not take an overflow of cursed energy. So whilst fighting Suguru Ghetto, it shattered as a result. And due to Yuta's cursed energy being so immense, he can leave his entire body engulfed in it to attack and defend. Unlike Yuji, Yuta is naturally weak. So the abundance of cursed energy he has lets him enhance everything about him, giving him insane speed and strength. After Yuta's return, he obviously has much better control over his bottomless cursed energy. He even overwhelms Yuji's supernatural strength, which he even said was like Maki with his attacks. What's more is that Yuji was totally unable to read where an attack would come from because of Yuta's constant energy flow. And so with this immense cursed energy flowing out of him, Yuta pours incredible destructive power into every attack, even if they seem not too powerful and can even stop some massive physical attacks. For example, in his fight against Yuji, Yuta not only stopped the car Yuji had thrown at him, but also threw it away on his own. Yuta's cursed energy control also enables him to restrict damage from attacks to a minimum. His strength could also one-shot Shoso, who has actually never been knocked out by anyone else he's faced so far, including Naoya Zenin, who claimed to be the rightful successor to the Zenin clan. Yet Choso's durability barely amounted to anything against Yuta's raw power. On top of this, Yuta can also shroud his entire body in cursed energy to make it hard to tell where the most powerful attacks of his are coming from, as shown whilst fighting against Yuji. Furthermore, it was even stated by Maki that Yuta attended the Goodwill event the year prior to Yuji, Nobara, and Megumi. And in the event, Yuta won by a landslide. Apparently, it was a 1-1 
one-sided affair. And it makes sense because Todo was looking for Yuta when he ran into Megami and Nobara with Mai. Todo still has a grudge against Yuta for apparently beating him up. Furthermore, Akutami revealed that Yuta learned most of his fighting style from Maki. So you know that his skills are top notch now as we see in the Kulin Games arc. Yuta took down a super powerful sorcerer at the Senai colony called Druv with ease even though he was one of the four most dangerous players in the colony. Yuta's quick thinking and excellent use of Rika was more than obvious in his fight against Kururushi, the wannabe Menos. It was a special grade cursed spirit with an insane weapon called Vestering Life Sword. He did not hesitate at all in relentlessly attacking the giant cockroach in order to save people and fulfill his promises to himself of not letting anyone suffer anymore. We even see in chapter 175 that Yuta has amazing observational skills and even realised that he was being watched by two players in between his fights. The whole time he was fighting the special grade, he was thinking about strategy and future thinking about his battles in the Culling Games. He did not want to reveal his techniques and other powers as he would face off against them as well. Yuta knowing that other sorcerers were watching his fight puts his sensory abilities at another level in comparison to others. It allows for him to make better opportunities but in the end he instantly kills it with reversed curse technique. Which is insane! You have to bear in mind that the insects were real. The story mentions how there were a swarm that was reinforced. However, Yuta killing them all in one slice is no problem. Throughout the latest Jujutsu Kaisen chapters that we can see Yuta taking powerful attacks head on like they are light punches at the very best. Be it diving straight into Kururushi's attack or surviving Ishiguri's massive blast. Yuta just tatakade his way through it all. In chapter 177, he also spammed reverse curse technique like it was child's play and blocked Ishiguri's granite blast with a single hand. There is no doubt that Yuta is so freaking close to Gojo's level of battle prowess. Just when Uro and Ryu had thought they were seeing the very end of Yuta's bottomless cursed energy, Yuta finally reveals his best card, which is none other than Rika. So far, Yuta and Megami are proving how Godra raised his students well as their teacher. They both have shown fantastic battle skills and judgment. And so if you'd like to know more, we have covered Megami's powerful potential in this video on your screen right now. So I think you should probably go and watch that next as we've done a similar breakdown for him. Too. But one major thing that sets Yuta apart from Gojo's other star student Megami is a domain expansion. Megami has his mind-blowing Chimera Shadow Garden that he is constantly approving of, as we have seen in his fight against Riji. Now let's talk about Yuta's domain expansion because chapter 178 confirmed that Yuta does indeed have one. We know that a domain expansion is like the truest form of a curse technique and amplifies an attack into a must hit. One. And so if Yuta has a domain, and since he technically is the user of multiple curse techniques, would that mean he can also use multiple domains? Or does he have a single domain based on his innate technique? In chapter 178, seeing that he was in a stalemate with his dangerous enemies Takako and Ryu, Yuta had judged that the best way to get out of this tricky situation was of course to use a domain expansion. However, his opponents weren't thinking anything different different and all three were on the verge of a three-way domain battle. Just when we were super hyped to witness the domain of Yuta finally and get an answer for his number of domains, duh, Akutami trolled us all. In chapter 179, the special grade cursed spirit Kururushi that Yuta had defeated managed to revive through Parthenogenesis and interrupted the domain battle. I really hate and love Akutami equally because I pulled my hair out in both excitement and frustration about getting blue board like that. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. But it only makes me even more pumped up for when Yuta finally uses it. Probably against Kenjaku, you know, his sworn enemy. 